It's finally arrived. It's the collector's edition of Undernight in Birth. Now inside this box is no ordinary collection. This is apparently something that you can only get in Japan. As far as I can tell, now there is going to be a limited edition released in the West, but what we have here is known as the Famitsu DX pack. Now the full cost of what's inside this parcel is 20,000 yen. At the current exchange rate, that's like $150, but for a Japanese income earner, it's more like $200. So let's take things out one by one. First, we've got the tapestry. This is, I believe, B2, and I think this is only available with this Eb10 DX pack. So if you buy it from Amazon, or if you buy it from Traders, or if you buy it from Eb10, all the different shops have different pre-order goods and bonuses. But we also have the main product itself, the limited edition that you normally can get from other shops as well. But if I'm not mistaken, it's this stuff here that you can only get from this Famitsu DX pack. Let's get it out of the plastic so we can actually see what we've got. So this is quite Weighty. I don't even know where to start. I'm so excited because I've been waiting for this game to come out. Let's start with the nice large objects. This is the plastic stand that says Undernight in Birth 2. What do you call it? A standee? A standee? Undernight in Birth. You can see the brand new character Kuon here and our three protagonists, I guess, from the original game. You've got Linne. I guess Kuon is her brother. You've got Seth and Hai. Let's show you what it looks like standing up. Beautiful has no function. We've also got the new characters, Tsurugi, Kuon, and Kaguya. I do hope that if the game is more successful that they'll invest some money in getting a sculptor in to actually make sculpted figures. These are bullet holes, I guess, but you, she also fires bouncy balls as bullets. And actually on the stand itself, which you can see I've done backwards, all your base are belong to me. So it is Undernight in Birth 2, Sisyllus on the base, and Kaguya, new character number one. So this is the second character that they revealed, and he too is a weapon fighter, but he fights with a shield. You know, he's fighting with a shield, but he's quite aggressive. He's obviously full of Genki, very energetic guy. I'm gonna place him here. The final of the three characters available on day one. This is Kuon. His weapon is these swords. He's got one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's got eight of these swords, and I believe they are red to look a bit like the weapon that Hyde. Has. This is the whole crew together, all three stands. The limited edition box with the game itself is very exciting, but I'm so excited about this. Oh yes, it's upside down. How luxurious is this? So hopefully you can see here, this is one of the main characters. It's Linne, presented really luxuriously with these ruffled, this ruffled fabric around the edges. Wow, that is so cool. You can see here, in 3D from multiple different angles. That's insane. Aha! All right, I found a black background that we can use here. This thing is actually seriously weighty, but you can see completely viewable in three dimensions. If you turn it around, completely see all the different angles. Absolutely gorgeous. I really wish we could have this for lots of other characters. This might well be the first time that any of the Undernight in Birth characters have been rendered in three dimensions, she's actually more visible from the front, and when you view from the back, they have filled in some of the 3D, but you can, it kind of just looks like a, a reverse version of her. She's hollowed out, and really the bubbles are mostly on the front-facing plane of Linne, and it's actually, there's a little bit at the back just to show the three-dimensional volume when you're looking from the side, but when you are looking from the back, you still see her face through because it's the, the layer on the back, as you can see, is a little bit thinner. I really wish we had this for every character. These are so cool. But that's not all because it does also come with the light stand. Let's see what happens when we put Linne in the light stand. Oh, that is insane. Oh, it's changing colors. What? I didn't even realize. So it's phasing between different colors of the rainbow. We've got green now, it's, f <laughs> it's fading to red. That's insane, hold, hold on a second. Even from the front angle, you can see the colors changing. If you look at exactly this angle, it looks like there are three different models in there because of the refraction of the light. That's insane. It really makes you wonder, will we ever get a 3D version of Undernight Inbirth? And if we do, is this what it will look like? I suppose the only way that this could have been even better would be if they had 3D modeled the familiar as well, but 
Of course, the familiar would have probably got in the way of some of the angles. You wouldn't be able to see Linnae from certain angles if the familiar were in there as well. If you really wanted to, you could put the light on the top. <laughs> that looks pretty cool, actually. I'm over the moon. I've never really owned one of these crystal things, but it really makes a difference when it's a character that you know, someone from a game that you actually play. But that is not all, my friends. That is not all. I want to check out the tapestry because I do not even remember which tapestry comes with this one. Now, I didn't specifically choose this tapestry. The one I chose for the Switch edition, I actually chose for the image that was on the tapestry. But this one, I think you only had one choice because it's as part of the Famitsu DX Collector's Pack. Time to check it out. Let's do a, a, a drop reveal. One, two, three. Oh my. <laughs> if you're a fan of Linné, um, then you're gonna be over the moon. I think actually her main design, you'd never really see this part because she's always got her yellow hoodie zipped up, even blown up to this B2 size. You can see tons and tons of detail on the illustration. Okay, so let's, we'll put Lene on display. <laughs> All right, it's time to finally open up the limited edition. And this is the main part of the package, of course. The Famitsu DX pack is all this stuff that you get with it, but the limited edition, which hopefully will also be available in the West. We've got the box, but we've also got this piece of paper. It's got some information about the game. Inside the box is this download code that I can use for the 25 announcer characters. This is, I believe, included in the deluxe version of the game if you buy it. But the limited box itself, I forgot to actually show it to you here. That is the size of the box kind of the size of a PlayStation 5 game. Inside the box, wow, what is this illustration? Original soundtrack and opening animation, what? Also, I haven't seen this version of the logo before with the normal font and the very straight Roman numeral two. This, this illustration is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. We've got the original soundtrack on a compact CD. Compact CD on compact disc. And we've got the Blu-ray, which is the opening animation. This is the original soundtrack leaflet. Inside you have some information. Oh, I see. There are two vocal tracks. It looks like track number one and track number two actually have lyrics. And wow, look at this. If you want to Google translate that for yourself. All right, I've only read a few sentences of this, but this is a letter from Raito, the composer. And as you can see here at the end of the letter, he has signed his name, Raito. There is no first name, there is no last name, there is only Raito. And the letter, talking about the reasons of why he composed the music the way that he did. And the next thing inside the limited box is the memorial art book. I don't know how much of this is brand new art, but we will see in a moment some of the original art that was released for the games when it came out, you know, back in 2012. But as you can see, we also have some of the new art that was illustrated for Sisless. This is Undernight Inbirth 2. Some gorgeous stuff in here. Obviously can't show you every image inside it, but if you want the memorial art book, remember, you gotta get yourselves a copy of the limited edition. And last but not least, I keep saying that, the PlayStation 5 game itself. You can see here the download code is for the Uni2 Season Pass and Kuon Unlock Code. Open it up and as you can see, we've got the PlayStation 5 disc gorgeously emblazoned with the artwork for Undernight Inbirth 2, and some simple instructions on how to play the game. So that's everything for the Undernight Inbirth 2 Limited Edition Ebb 10 Famitsu DX Pack. It is 20,000 yen, roughly 150 to $200, depending on the exchange rate. This is quite a lot of stuff to get for a game, and I'm really happy because a lot of games are launching out right now for like $150, and it's literally just the digital game and maybe a few digital extras, but giving us this physical pack, which includes not just the game, but also the soundtrack CD, a Blu-ray of the opening movie, a memorial art book with tons of new art as well written for the, drawn for the new game, this plastic stand that you can put on your desk, even at work, most people probably won't uh, bat an eyelid at this. They may be a little bit curious about this otaku good that you've put on your desk though, this, the crystal cube, don't actually know what that's really called, but awesome that it even comes with this RGB light. So cool that we get to see an Undernight character in 3D. I don't know if there's anywhere else that we have seen characters in three dimensions already. This letter from Raito talking about why and the reasons he composed the BGM the way he did for the original soundtrack in this game, the PlayStation 5 game itself, the limited edition box, and 
Also, three stands for the new characters. Again, would have liked to have actual figures, but that would have bumped up the price. And also, you know, I just really wished that I had bought the acrylic stands for the other characters when CLR released. Maybe there will be a chance for me to find those secondhand somewhere and I can complete the entire acrylic character set. And last but not least, I can have Lene kind of staring ominously at me, kind of blown away, wasn't actually expecting it to come to this much. What do you think of this DX pack? Would you like to see something like this in the West? Make sure you comment below because if there is a large enough response, who knows? Maybe they will even make this Japan, as far as I'm aware, Japan only collector's pack. Maybe they'll make it available in the West as well. Maybe through limited run games or another company that does limited runs of physical products. And actually, I'm kind of excited because the next video I'm going to record is another unboxing, but this time for the Switch version of the game with another tapestry. So look forward to that as well. <sighs> That's all. I'll see you all in the next one.